Hello and welcome to week eight of Esper's Refit. This week we discover some disturbing holes on Esper's deck. I get to play with a new toy. And the painters put a layer of high build on the hull. It's not all fun and games though. Some of our tasks can be pretty tedious. Indeed. One of the jobs we keep putting off is examining all the mast fittings. When we removed the rigging, many of the fittings required brute force and in some cases had to be drilled out. Each screw and bolt was meticulously bagged, labelled and examined. Any with broken heads or threads will need replacing, which will involve sending someone up to Phuket to source the parts. Liz is in charge of the administrative side of our refit project and spends many hours updating and checking our budget. Another task is sourcing and importing into the country various boat bits from around the world. We'll be importing goods into the yard's bonded warehouse and this requires meticulous paperwork and translating into Thai each and every bolt in preparation for a visit from customs. Fortunately, we have Ju on hand to help with this task. So it's been almost two months now since we've hauled the boat out and one of the things we need to do is to measure the moisture the content of the hull and the theory goes that you're supposed to leave it for a few weeks before uh, you start to take uh, readings and using a moisture meter can be a bit of a, a dark art um, although it's supposed to read the relative uh, moisture content of a surface one of the problems, of course, is that uh, these are extremely sensitive and depending on various conditions, they can give very different readings. So really we use a moisture meter more as, as a barometer and we'll just measure the actual changes of the various spots on the hull over a period of weeks. Now, uh, I don't really know too much about this, but I did just quickly read of two different types of resins that were used in boat building. And one was called uh, orthophthalic resin and the more recent one is an isophthalic resin and the orthophthalic resin is probably the thing uh, the type of resins that Esper was made out of and these uh, actually absorb more moisture so we need to give Esper a little bit longer to properly dry out anyway we're just going to go around the hull now and we're just going to mark various points and just record what it says on here and then over the period of the next few weeks we'll just continue to monitor the same areas uh, to see how it changes. So if you can see this display here, the idea is it has two sensors here and we literally just hold this up flat on there and you can see this sensor gives us a reading of about, about four. So we'll just mark this point here, just for. But that's coming in at about uh, around about eight. So in theory, that has about eight percent moisture in that area. And as I said, that's not strictly true. But what we're going to do is we're just going to use that now as a benchmark. And over the next few weeks, we're just going to keep monitoring these areas and to hopefully see these numbers go down. So one of the problems we've had um, with the interior is the fact that we're using a new very pale white veneer and we've had to retain some of the original ash. Now May has done a really good job so far in uh, removing all the old varnish from the ash and sanding everything back. The problem we find though is that even after sanding, the ash has a more yellowy effect than our new veneer, which is a more of a grey white. So you can see it really well here. Hopefully it will, you'll pick it out. This top bit is solid ash, and this under here is the veneer that we've used. So we're trying to come up with a plan to actually make the difference not quite so obvious. One thing we came up with was the idea of putting white paint or a bluish 
greyish white paint over the ash to reduce the yellow and then take it off. It, and this is what we did, it's the first time we've done it. Um, the, the ash down here has, has a really lovely grain on it. Jamie put some white paint and then sanded it back just to get a very quick idea. And you can see again, that's what it looked like originally and that's what it looks like with the white paint then sanded off. Definitely an improvement. So Pong's been working in the galley this week and it's the first time we've seen our new veneer going up which is, as we've mentioned before, a brushed aluminium. Here it is. It's actually covered in uh, a plastic film so you don't get uh, to see it in its full glory but you can get an idea of what we're trying to achieve here which is a brushed steel look and so far so good. We're very very happy with it. But the more interesting thing, well the equally interesting thing let me say, is the end wall which we have now coated in an orangey red gloss formica, much to our workers' very confused <laughs> minds. Un asked us where we wanted to put the red and we said we want, we want it on this wall at the end there and he said and here opposite as well and we said no he said but you only have it one wall and we said and we said that's what we want and he said why and we said design and he raised his eyes and said oh yeah crazy foreigners anyway we're happy with it so the other thing we've been talking about in the galley here is the surfaces we have been very kindly donated a piece of corel which is um, a kind of uh, composite stone which we were going to put on here and perhaps on the fridge top as well. In fact now I've now measured it up and if we were to put it on here we'd have to cut it and it then loses all its qualities. So the next question is what will we do with this? We have to change this. Um, so we're looking at getting our own corel in and the one we've chosen is quite a dark grey anthracite but I need to get the, uh, the, um, the price confirmed on that before we go ahead with it. If we don't, then we might revert to some kind of formica, but hopefully we'll make that decision next week. It's Monday, five o'clock in the evening, and the guys have just knocked off for uh, the end of the day. I just wanted to show you this before we start glass fibering and uh, filling this up. This is very curious. I don't actually know what this is, it's um, filler, some kind of filler, and it goes all the way along here. So I can't work out if this was from the original mould and then this piece was retrofitted afterwards. Uh, but anyway, it seems to coincide with a leak that we have uh, had to contend with, uh, both inside in the cabin and also, more importantly, down here. We've had a, a crack that's appeared over the last few years and the crack has run uh, all the way down here. So um, I got the boys to grind this back and lo and behold the top here it's really soft, soft fiberglass. You can literally dig this away with your finger. So I don't know whether water has got down inside here, there's a few holes and get caught in the cavity and has leaked out here but there's clearly a problem here. So we're going to grind this right back tomorrow, uh, try and locate the source, fill it in uh, with uh, filler and then obviously put some epoxy over the top and finally the biaxial over the top of that which should hopefully solve the leak. As Jamie's busy creating new holes in the deck the painters have been filling in holes on the hull. This week they applied a layer of high build which is a thick paint designed to fill in minor pits and imperfections. It's fared back once more before the all grip 545 undercoat is applied. One of the things we've been discussing this week is electrics and electrical components and so we've sat down with our electrician and we have started to plan our electrics. Un has kindly printed out a plan of uh, ESPA, this is a floor plan, and on each floor plan what I've done is I've marked out on one plan the uh, main circuit, the side lighting, on the next plan the ceiling lights, the LED lights, and on the third plan 
the position of every single thing that's going to appear on the breaker circuit which is this great big long list here and the breaker circuit we're going to put back up here so with these plans it means that Sombat, our electrician, now has a thorough idea of exactly where we want to place everything which means that he can now start to tackle this snake's pit. We're in Liz's office which we've renamed Liz's boffis uh, because this is where Liz is going to sit in her office and boss me around which she does anyway so. Uh, so the idea here was that this is Boffy's office seat, he's going to be here, um, this was going to cover the water maker. So just quickly wanted to show you what's going on here. So this will be a seat which we can pop out and Ton has now full mic at inside. We're going to try and waterproof this and we're going to put a few cavities in here as well, a few holes, sorry, into the cavities which will lead down into the bilges so when the water maker leaks which it invariably will the water will drain down there uh, we've still got some of the original pipe work from the water maker already here but uh, this is just now so much more comfortable for the machine to sit in here and then on this side is the pump unit which sits in nicely there along with the, uh, the fresh water filter as well so very pleased with that Week 8 was a long one, and despite a brief shower on Saturday, it was hot too. As we move into the transitional period before the southwest monsoon, it's going to get hotter still. This Saturday, the boatyard residents had a barbie, whilst the locals next door enjoyed the setting sun before their day off tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.